Okay, I want to. I was told I should go ahead and start, so I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm Susan Simonick, and I'm going to be doing a painting. Can you guys all hear real quick? No. no. Okay, oh. Susan's starting. Is our value? All right, I have to be loud. So I was a teacher for 33 years. I taught biology, so I have no problem with that. So um, I'm going to be doing a painting. And while I, I'm going to do two steps, while the steps dry, I'm going to show you some other techniques that I have used and worked with. Uh, I'm a person who paints every day, um, and, and I think you'll learn the best doing that, to go into your studio. Um, so, I am working with Kadi paper, K-H-A-V-I. It's a handmade um, paper that's imported from India, the south of India. A long story about it is started by Mahatma Gandhi, and it's a very unusual 400 pound non-sized paint uh, surface. And I'm gonna start out, I'm gonna only use one color. This brush is a brush I made. It is 29, 59 cents. You get it at a, at a uh, garage or a hardware store. And it is amazing for making trees. So we're going to start out by putting some background in and some small pine trees. This will be a background. Why did you choose that paper? I uh, bought this paper on a whim. I was out at a, a, a unique little shop and they had these books i just loved them so i bought one and i it was all full of cotton paper actually at that time it's called punjab paper they quit importing punjab okay we're going to make it and so it's very unique some artists use it exclusively but it's hard to work with because it is not sized this is background. These are trees that should fade as they dry. As everyone knows, they dry. everything dries lighter. So there's that. I'm going to expedite things because I know things are like set this aside. Any questions? This brush I buy and go like that, take scissors, and I get all kinds of my main brush I paint with. Now, I'm going to move on to the interest of time. My piece I'm working for, for working on for Watercolor Society. And I use a lot of masking, and I'm going to show a way to put on masking. Um, I have Paul Jackson's masking that he was a, did a workshop here. And I use these little containers that you get at a restaurant and then get your dressing on the side. And I pour masking into this. So it's, yeah, a little bit. And then I use a crochet needle. I have lots of different shapes. And so I can get a crochet needle and I can do, I'm doing the cobblestone. This is a a square in Ljubljana, Slovenia. And that's gonna be hopefully my entry for the chariot show if I accept it, which I'm my worst critic. So here's how you put, can you see this or no? Everyone's welcome to come up here if you'd like to, to around her workspace if you wanna bring your chairs up. This is how I put it on. I can be very, very precise. I don't mess up as a brush because I hate to put brushes in this stuff. And then to show how, how cool it is, I brought another little brush with some neutral tint. I'll show you, last night I put a bunch on so that you can see how it looks. So here is the square with cobblestones, and there's going to be a bike rider. 
right there. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're doing great. Very good. So I'll go through and do that. It's amazing how quickly that works. I can do this in 15 minutes. It's very, very good. Okay. Another thing, I don't know if you've heard of, Daniel Smith has put out a watercolor ground. I don't know if that's, can you see it? That means you could paint on wood. You could paint, paint on anything. And I know with, for a jury show, you've got to be very careful about how you um, how you frame things. But when you enter all kinds of things, here's a painting done on this ground. The only downside I can see is that you see a brush stroke, because I've brushed it on. And some people, they suggested Daniel Smith to sand it to get it smooth. but then you wind up with a whole bunch of powder. So I roll it on. I go to Lowe's and buy a little one of those little rollers, roll it on, and you can paint on canvas. I, I've always been jealous of oil painters because they can paint, they don't have to frame, they can paint on uh, stretched canvas. Okay. Let me see. I'm gonna dab this a little. And then, whoops. I'm gonna paint closer up. It's not quite as dry as I'd like. But I think I can go ahead, let's see. Oh, I'll show you something else while it dries. Maybe I'll finish up with that. I don't know if you know who Cindy Barron is. Cindy Barron is a watercolorist slash oil painter. And I admire her work because it doesn't look like watercolor. I myself cannot paint in oil. That is not a an option for me. I'm nauseated in 15 minutes. So I paint only watercolor and I've gotten a lot of flack over it. I've got, and mostly it's men. Men will come up and say, well, why, why do you paint watercolor? Why don't you paint oil or acrylic? And it's always interesting. So I lost a brush. There it is. Okay, I'll show you how this lift goes. Cindy lifts paint. Uh, a lot of artists require, that's how they paint. If you've ever heard of Shang-Chi Lee, he's famous for his koi. He lifts it out. He does a whole background, just painted. Then he lifts out the goldfish shape and paints it. The only problem is you've got to know what watercolors are liftable and which ones are not, because some are not. Cindy, I paid for a $99 uh, demo of hers. This, all this white here has been lifted. It's not painted. So what she does, she uses a cloth and this cloth will allow her to lift. And I searched and searched and searched and searched for it. I bought cloths everywhere until I found one that could work. So this is, you take a brush, and let's say I want to put a uh, trunk of a tree right here. So I, I just wet, whoops, I got too much water. I'll put it over here. Put it right there. Then you take the cloth and you just dab it like so. And you rub it. And you have a trunk. If you want to make it a little more elaborate, let's have a few branches coming off. There's one, there's another, you can get quite elaborate. And then she dabs it. So what kind of cloth is that? <laughs> I went to antique stores. This is an antique textile of some type. And it's, it's, but it, you know, it's very unique. So I love it. I'm going to work on that. It's very difficult. See if this is dry yet. Yeah, it's half decent. Okay, now we're going to finish this painting and I'm going to put a background in that you would never expect. This also is done by Cindy Barron. So now, 
Yeah, this seems to work. This brush is so amazing at doing trees. Trying to see. <coughs> We're gonna kind of make some water here. And if you follow me on Facebook, I said something about doing a portrait and I was planning on doing that, but at the time, I don't think I could have carried that off. But I do pretty quick portraits. I've taken three workshops from Ted Nuttall, who's coming next year, I understand. And he, his, one of his students was, um, was that guy, the guy that's coming in, the, in September or October? Michael, Michael. Yeah, he paints just like Ted, very, very similar. So, I keep bumping my head. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. I'm just very uncoordinated person. So, I'll put another one there. I learned about this brush or bristle brush from taking a class with uh, John, what's his name, from Australia. Okay. Um, <laughs> that was that that rang a bell, didn't it? I hit my head again. Put another one over in here. So this brush is pretty phenomenal for making trees <coughs> and making them look realistic. You don't have to you know, do all the all the branches or anything. I'm trying not to butt my head so often that I can stop me. <laughs> so anyway, this brush, here's what it can do with, with trees. If you want a tree that is a broadleaf tree instead of a conifer, bring Explain the brush again. What okay. you, yeah, how'd you make the brush? You, you bought it at a hardware store. And yeah, <laughs> it's in the paint section. If they have the really cheap, cheap brushes, not the real expensive ones, they have various sizes of ones that look like this. It's a, it's a goat hair brush. It's called a bristle brush of some kind. I have a hundred of them. I mean, I have them. I bought them out because the big places like Lowe's and Home Depot, they don't have them. You have to find a little local. In fact, my little local hardware store up in Michigan is where I got most of them. So what I will do is I'll take it and I'll spread it out like that with my thumb, take small scissors and clip it. Huh. Okay. Huh. And then it's just does a beautiful job. Awesome. And this potty paper, if we let it dry and look at it, we're gonna see all kinds of stuff happen on the paper. See? <clears throat> Some of my best ones have been done on this cotty paper. So it's supposed to look like water. I think it does. Guess I'm blowing my own horn, sorry. 
question, the cotti paper, do you have to order it special or is, oh. it, is it standard at most? No, it's very hard to find. Um, I, if I have time, I can tell you the background of it. Is uh, You can find it in things like this. But what happened was, you know, the British were taking over India and they were being horrible to the, to the Indian <coughs> people. And so they were facing a war and um, the Indian people depended on Britain to make their clothing. So um, Mahatma Gandhi, he developed some garment factories in India. And the problem was there were a lot of garments that were thrown away. And so he, in every province of India, produces a watercolor paper from the discarded garments. So this is 100% cotton paper, 400 pounds. So that means 100 sheets weighs 400 pounds. And it is getting hard to find, but I, this summer I took a Zoom with uh, um, Angus McEwen, who does hyper-real estate watercolor. He came solely on this. Um, it's it's K-H-A-D-I. Have you checked Alibaba? No. It's a big import source, and they have a ton of Indian companies. I, I used to have it imported. I would check them from the Central New York Supply in New York City. They would import it, but they went out of business. It's, check on, Alibaba, it's, it's hard to believe that they went out of business. They were huge, and so yeah. So anyway, I'm done. You can, Amazon and cheap dose. Yeah, it's hard to find. What, Take what did you just say? Amazon and cheap dose. You found it there. I like full sheets. It's hard to, I couldn't find full sheets last time I looked. I could only find these quarter sheets. But, yeah. Susan, yeah. can I ask you a question? The, the Cotti paper, um, you mentioned, has no sizing to it. Right. So obviously it just really soaks in the paint. Yeah, it's hard to paint on it first. Yeah. And, you, and that's something that you have to consider when you're working on that. It's yeah. It's just a really, it's a lot of paint. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just different since it's not sized. You know, it's just, it's just way different. What is it that you like about it so much? Uh, the texture, I think, and the fact that what I do is, um, I have a, a studio downtown Indianapolis, and I like to put these floated, and I put six coatings on it, so it's not under glass or plastic, and people can touch it. And it's almost like a sculpture. So you don't put it in the frame either, or if you do, you it's have it so it's it's just showing. It's a floater frame. So, I, you know. But now you couldn't use those in the jury show. No, no, no. You have to get, get your art out there so you don't have to worry about constraints with the jury shows. So you gotta, you got to do all this stuff. And I, I can't pay in anything but watercolor. That's it. That's what I'm going to do. I gave an art speech at Monroe, Michigan Art Commission. I did a demo. I had my my portraits, no portraits. I had four, four people come up stand in line. Why are you doing watercolor? Why, why didn't you try this? Why didn't you try that? Why didn't you? And I've had this many times. I don't know, maybe I look like a weenie and they go, I know I can go up and tell her what to do. <laughs> Susan, what color is that you're using? I used a combination of a Quiller, Stephen Quiller. No, this is phthalo blue turquoise and the dark, which I love. Oops, is uh, indigo. I use indigo a lot in a lot of things. No, wait, I forgot one more thing. Here's what Cindy does. I didn't. This isn't dry, so I don't know. Okay, I forgot to do a, a, a sky. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a bottle of color. You can do any color. I got to hold it up right. Is that watercolor watered down or yeah. is that uh, dope? What was, it, what was the second thing? Was it dope paint? Dope, what's that? He makes his own paint and he's a sign. Yeah. Oh, that didn't work out. Usually, oh, oh this thing. Stay down. <laughs> anyway, usually it doesn't beat up like that. So I must have something on the surface of this paper that hand hand bring. But 
Is it cool place? Ask you a question. Yes. What kind of coating? You did what brand and what is the coating? In there? So I didn't hear you say that. There's a lot of, you know, people out west do this all the time. Watercolors are rarely uh, matted and framed, and so yeah. Um, the first thing I use is you can go to like Hobby Lobby or uh, Michaels, and you can get this stuff called Workable Fix It Tip with an F. And I spray that on somewhere where I don't have to breathe it in because being allergic to oils, I'm very allergic to that. I spray another layer, and then I buy, I bought a $50 jar of actual watercolor varnish. And I water that down, it's like eight to one, or eight to two, eight parts water, two parts this stuff, it's expensive. And I brush that on, and let that on dry. Then I brush it on again and let it dry. And you have an impervious coating that water will run off and people can touch and you don't have to frame. And it pops the color. Unbelievable. Does it give UV protection as well? UV full of protectant, definitely. Okay. It's called watercolor varnish. Yeah, it's varnish. I, don't, I didn't bring it with me. You said you mix it 8 to 20. It says on I, I follow instructions on it, which is very dilute. So it lasts a long time. So it's $50 or more now. Do you have a different <coughs> brand? No, I'm sorry. When you say 80 20, it's 80 water to water. Yeah. And it doesn't yellow. It's varnish. No, no, it's not anything like the varnish oil painters use. Nothing like that. And it, it does not yellow. It's wonderful. Is it a spray or brush? No, it's a, I brush it on. I mix it up in an old jar and use those foam, foam rubber um, things and use that. Um, I hope that I gave you some ideas or helped in some way. I was very worried last week. I've just gotten calm like yesterday. So does it, why well, it be does it wash off? Does the color wash off? Color wash off. Oh! Yeah, like I life. never do that, but you can do it more easily with this potty paper. I mean, if you need to lift something, it's pretty easy to lift. <laughs>
for like just a. Okay. You're painting on dry. Yeah. yeah, what on dry I usually do, especially when I'm doing portraits. Oh, do you guys ever use a, a one thing I learned from Shen Yi Li is to use silk sponges for getting a soft edge. And there's been many times I was going to talk about workshops. I've gotten to the point where I'm probably not going to go to many more workshops because nothing's worse than sitting there and spending $500 on the workshop, $500 on your flight, finding a hotel in Dallas, which is what I did to watch Ted, and sitting there and going, you know what? If I had just sat down in my studio yeah. every day for a few hours, I could have figured this out and saved what? $1,500. So I, I, some of the people, I take one thing away from Shung Ki Lee, I took away trying to learn uh, what a, a liftable watercolor is. Most, a lot of watercolors will tell you how liftable they are on their, on their tube. There is a number, and then some of them will actually have a little thing like a circle that's half filled, which means it's somewhat liftable, a circle that's empty, which means it's definitely liftable, and everybody knows that things like cerulean <coughs> blue is so opaque, there's no way you're going to lift it. You're not going to lift phthalo blue, it's staining, it's permanent. So like when we uh, were talking about the 80-20 thing. If you go to the Transparent Watercolor Society, they somewhat try to limit the cadmium orange, the cadmiums, but they still allow it. And I called them when we were deciding on this new prospectus, and they said they have people who look at it and they can tell whether or not it's transparent or whether it's not. But you're allowed to use the cadmium they don't allow any gouache whatsoever. So. so what kind of sponge is that again? A silk sponge. I have, I don't go anywhere without them. I love to. A Where do you get it? Sponge. You get them at Michael's silk. Hobby Lobby Walmart. Silk, S-I-L-K. S-I-L-K sponge. And uh, Shen Ki Lee was one that showed me about that. Of course, everybody knows about Mr. Eraser. And what about, uh, and a lot of guys like Charles Sharm, Char Charles Sharm, Charm, Charm, no, Charm, I can't say it, S-C-H-A-L-L-E-R, Schaller. He uses a lot of tape, masking tape, and so does John Salmonen. John Salmonen will like these straight lines, I'll put masking tape up here. I'll put masking tape here and I'll paint and that'll be a straight edge. You don't have to worry about drawing a straight line. So, you know, that kind of thing. What kind of paper is that? This is my favorite paper of all is Saunders Waterford 300 pound. That's what I use most of the time. And uh, I, I, I bought to figure out what type of paper I bought a sample pack and try them all. And, that's my favorite. So is that hot or cold press? Oh, all hot press. All hot press. I hate cold press, but there's some people that goes away on. She paints on cold press all the time. I like hot press. <clears throat> so I don't have. I'm not, okay. Oh, I can show you. Okay. Do you want us to turn the lights on and have people come up here, or do you want to talk more about paint yes. or? Here's a painting that I did with gouache, and I got fed up and did, I did gouache, but this is all masking. I know it's not a good example, but you had to do masking several different, it took so much thought that I had to do masking in the shadows as well as in the outside part. And then Can you I used- the camera, please? Thank you. Yeah, it's not that good. I'm embarrassed, I don't know. Oh, stop. Oh, no. <laughs> This is not a good example. I did this three times, and this is the worst one. So it just happened to be on the back of that. So that's why I saw it. But yeah, like for instance, there's water. There's this is my favorite place. I've painted this a, t a ton of times. It's in, and there's water lilies, that, and they're they're various values. There's there's a value within the shadow. There's a value out in the 
in the lake. And so this painting has gone a long way. And where is it? Where is it from? Deer Lake? Deer Lake, yeah. It's near Watercolor, uh, Florida. Watercolor, Florida is where we go. So I am, any other questions? Please ask another one because I'm out of any more. I, didn't, I was going to bring a portrait and do it. I do quick portraits usually. But we can lift that. I think it's dry. Do you use the same techniques in your portraits? There, I'm, I'm lifting that. Um, I do, I, my portraits, I do a combination of how Ted not all does his. He starts out with a uh, wash. He starts out with a wash. He uses a mixture of, should I give this away since he's coming? Ross Young, <laughs> Cat Orange, and um, Elizabeth, the Elizabeth for the Darks. And he'll start out and do a bead. You know what a bead is? Yes. Yeah. So he'll start at the top of the, he has a great uh, uh, drawing. My drawings for my watercolor portraits are six, eight hours. The painting is maybe 45 minutes. I'm done. That's why I like watercolor. You can go quick. Oil dries. If you did oil, I have to wait for it to dry. So he just does a bead down from the top. And then he lets that dry. He does always usually wet on dry. Yeah, wet on dry. And then he goes in and he does the shadows around the eyes, nose. Now, he talks about when you're looking at someone, looking at how the light falls on their face. When you look at how they light falls, their bottom lip always catches the light. The top lip is always in the shadow. So you don't paint the bottom lip. You let the observer imagine that. You just paint the, the dark shadow underneath the lower lip. And then he doesn't do anything uh, perfectly symmetrical unless it's the eyes. He always does the eyes perfectly symmetrical. Then I like um, Stan Miller. Have you seen Stan? You haven't seen Stan no. Miller? <laughs> no. You have we can't look up. You gotta look up Stan Stan Miller online. His portraits are phenomenal. He makes oil painters want to wish they could do watercolor. Did you say Sam or Stan? Stan, S-T-A-N, Stan Miller. And he's got, I think, 19 lessons on YouTube. Step by step, his portraits are unbelievable. He's, he's a master. And so, just some ideas. I, I am so proud of the Watercolor Society for making it all watercolor. You know, watercolor in this country is not respected the way it is in other countries. You know, other countries, they get big bucks for the watercolors, tens of thousands of dollars. That would never happen here. You know, and I've, I'm at uh, Circle City, Circle City Industrial Complex downtown, and I really respect the other artists who don't do watercolor. Like, there's a guy there called Matt uh, Hurdle. You, you got to go. His stuff's amazing. He comes up to me and goes, Wow, you did watercolor. That's really hard. You don't hear many other people. They think of here, they think of watercolor as an elementary thing. You do it in first and second grade. And so it's just for elementary people. So, yeah, we need to have respect for watercolor. Got in a conversation with Ted Nuttall before one of his workshops, just candy. And he goes, We've got to find some way to have people respect watercolor more because we just don't in this country. So I'll shut up. Can you tell us about your painting? You've already drawn it. What's your process? You said you're going to enter this in the jury show. So what's your process on this? <laughs> okay. I have learned a lot of books. Like what? Did you freehand all that? No, did you trace it? I, I, I do a combination. You guys remember uh, Nancy Noel that lived here? Yeah. Okay. I used to do prints for her. I did the she clay printing for a while. And she... Uh, she traces everything. She traces everything. She has a big uh, projector, puts it on the wall. Yeah. Ted not all taught me a way of painting something where you take an X and Y axis and you take the reference the same size and you measure from them where they crisscross to however far on the X or Y and you put those dots together. To me, that's the same thing as tracing but it's way more difficult. So 
What I do is, I'm going to divulge this, is I get a, well, I don't have it, I thought I had it. I get a, 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 the same size as what I want to do, like I did for this. I have them printed out on light paper. I got a local printer. And I take it, turn it over. And get the, the subject. My reference photo that I'm going to paint. On the back, I put a whole bunch of uh, dark graphite. Turn it over, tape it down, get a sharp pencil in there. But you still have to do quite a bit of drawing. Yeah, you, you, this is just the main, if you see here, just the main lines. I still have to do a lot of drawing. I still have to, you know, like, I have the people that I want to have this um, cobblestones look like part. It's, gonna, it's not going to be everywhere. It's going to just give an idea. Of what. If you get on my website, you'll see uh, places where I've done uh, street scenes, my urban things really sell well. I don't have any, I just have the, the pictures. And you use your own photos. Yes, it's very important you have to do that. In your yeah, because of, or you have a free, you can look to free, free photos online. But you have to use your own to be very discerning how to take pictures. But I'm gonna pass around, can I pass around my sure. business card sure. or am I being a, a bragger? Yeah. You have the photo for that? Uh, it's on my oh, it's on my um, phone and iPad, but I I don't know how I would show that in here. So I I was gonna do it. Yeah. You can just pull it up on the iPad and put it on the table. I I only have my phone. And I don't know if it'll go underneath the camera or not. Yeah, have my phone back. Oh, this my husband is from Slovenia, so it's really a picturesque place. See if I can get all the politics out here. Sorry. Oh, where is it? It's down here. Oh, I took pictures. He took he took pictures for me. Yeah. That's all right. I don't have it. So sorry. So anyway, there's my uh I'll pass it on the card that you know. Feel free to contact me through my website. Yeah, any questions? You can also access Susan's profile on our website. Yeah, I have my website. I think it's. I think. My, I think my website. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, I think we are. I'm going to turn the lights up now, okay. and um, if anybody else has any questions for Sue, feel free to come up and talk with her, but uh, I'm going to um, adjourn. Thank you, Sue. Thanks. Sue Semenik. Thank you.